So it's been a busy two months and we want to dive into this in today's coffee talk here. We know you all are talking about it and there's a lot of folks who are just exhausted from the amount of severe weather that we have seen. When you look at the calendar, you can see why. Back to back months, every single day almost was busy. Yeah, I mean, this illustrates it perfectly, right? Uh, and you know, it's not crazy to think April and May would be severe months, right? That's the severe season. Yeah. But man, you, you, when you're in it, it's like, we just need a break, and we didn't get much of a break at all. And Alex and Jen, you guys are pointing out, look at May, for example. Uh, the last bit of May, the last week, 818 reports of mm -hmm. severe weather just this past Sunday. 800 in one, in day. one day. In one day. Holy cow. Yeah. And this includes everything, hail, wind, and, and tornadoes. Right. There was a lot of tornadoes, too. Mm -hmm. Let's go there, because we need to talk about nationally what the tornado reports have looked like. Now, this is year to date. This is not just May. But there has been a whole lot, and some places perhaps more surprisingly than others. Yeah, we talked about how the Midwest was mm -hmm. extremely active when it comes to tornadoes. We've had a record in Ohio and uh -huh. West Virginia, number of tornadoes, and we're only midway through the year. It is remarkable to see the number of tornado reports in Iowa, over 100, as you mentioned, yeah. in other places in the Midwest, outpacing a lot of places in the Southeast that would normally be mm -hmm. outrunning them as well. So it is remarkable, the distribution of tornadoes. Yeah, and so, you know, sort of begs the question is, um, where are we compared to average? Why did we see this? And if you look at this map, which shows you how we've been pacing throughout the year in terms of the number of tornado reports specifically, look at how the plot just jumped up in red in May. It was something about May that got us in that tornado mode. Yeah, so what was it, Greg? What, what was it? Yeah, what was it? <laughs> Let's go have a look at the pattern. So I spent a little bit of time, a little bit too late last night working on this, but it was very easy to sort of d d dissect May's jet stream pattern. We had a big trough in the West throughout much of the month and a ridge in the Southeast. And you might think, well, what does that mean? Well, that sets up a contrast in air masses and a contrast in temperatures. And often in between those air masses is where you have problems. No surprise, that is pretty much where we saw mm -hmm. most of the tornado warnings in the month of May. Yeah, I mean, lined up almost perfectly, right? Yeah, sure, you're going to have some outliers here and there as the you know, pattern changes here and there briefly. Mm -hmm. But overall, it kept kind of splitting right back to that pattern of right in the middle of the country storms over and over. We were talking about this. It was like day after day. Day after day. You're going to be in that threat zone. You're in that threat zone and it, it played out. And it's not just tornadoes. It's also severe thunderstorm winds. We had a lot of really strong wind events. How over about the past this? Month. How many thousand severe thunderstorm warnings in one month do you need to realize mm -hmm. that this has been a wow. hyperactive month with severe weather. Yeah, it's been exhausting. Thousands and thousands. Yeah. So that For was all the people living through this. You know, think about wow. it. It's how many multiple times they get into warnings. Yeah, and the total number, that was just May, the total number for uh, the year since January 1st has really been off the charts mm -hmm. when you break it down by county warning areas. So it has been a remarkable season, one to remember. Actually, one to forget, unfortunately, right. as well. We, right. Yeah, you certainly wish you can. Uh, but we do want to look at some of the tornadoes that, um, that happened. Uh, there's a lot to learn. We look at every single piece of video that comes in, and, you know, there were so many, mm -hmm. and they were all different. Yeah, they were. Yeah, of course, we talked about how things really got kicked off in April. This was back on April 27th in yeah. Stillwater, Oklahoma. I mean, clear as day, that tornado there rolling across the sky, that's a scary sight. I think this was rated in EF0. I was going back through the um, reports. There, this was the day where <clears throat> we had the Marietta, Oklahoma tornado yes. nearby. That was EF4. But mm -hmm. this goes to the point Dr. Postel talks about all the time. You can't look at a tornado and think it's this strong. You can't do it at all. Big ones sometimes yeah. aren't very strong, and little ones are sometimes very strong. Mm -hmm. There's right. no real correlation between size and intensity. I mean, look, what do you see in this? I see the inflow coming in. <laughs> well, oh. I mean, there's so much to point out. If I saw that, I'd either be you know, compromised with fear or uh, ambition, wanting to get a little bit closer to see what's really going on. So, yeah, there's a lot there. Yeah. There's a lot there. Um, yeah, Jen, you have more videos? Well, I mean, we, we do have a lot. We're going to share them throughout the show today. We also wanted to talk about the Barnes Doll one in Oklahoma because this was a nighttime one. Oh, my goodness. And man. a strong one. Unfortunately, there were deaths. Look at this. When the lightning lights it up, yeah, that's, you that's can see the, the big wedge that's there. 